Good morning. It's wow. Friday. It is Friday. It is finally. I, uh, you know, it's funny. The week just kind of flew by for me. Time like, flies when you're having fun, kid. I know, and we, we have way too much of it. Last night, boy, we had a lot of fun. We did. We went down to our evening Thursday show, Mustang Ranch. Mustang After Dark. That was my mm -hmm. first time actually being at the show. and. It was uh, It was an experience. Surreal, yes. Uh, <laughs> guess before we get too far, we should say you're watching LoadedTV.com, live from the Bonanza Casino in Reno, Nevada, The Wake Up Call. I'm Ken McKim. I'm Brandy DeGuin, and if you're new at viewing, um, go ahead and chat in, let us know where you're from, and you guys can catch us Monday through Friday, 9 to 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, live. <laughs> Leroy, did Ken like the ranch? Uh, yeah, I mean, sure. What, what was not to like? It was fun. It was different. It was fun. Um, two of the girls um, kidnapped me and took me into their room. Yeah. <laughs> After the show, yeah. Stuff. I don't know. Some stuff. That's yeah. A secret. It's uh, she swore to secrecy about what they actually talked about, but uh, they're nice. They are really nice. They're all very nice. Yeah, I know. There. Ken at one point was zooming in on a piece of paper, and I told him to zoom in on some other stuff. <laughs> well, I, w I was <laughs> conflicted because she kept, you know, she put the paper up there for people to see, but but you know, then there was. And That's I'm smart. like, can nobody wants to see a piece of paper. They want to see the. It was my first time it running was, camera at at the event, so I'm not used to being actually yeah, able know. to actually zoom in on, <laughs> you know, naughty bits. So I felt a little weird naughty doing bits. it, naughty bits. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank That's you, Leroy. Awesome. This is good job, buddy. Thanks. Well, we already have so many chatters. Yeah. Um, Video Vixen, TiVo, BLD, Randy, Nina, Dean, Leroy, Paula, Aaron. Good hey, morning, Aaron. Or afternoon or night, wherever yeah. you are in the world. Paula says she's from Austin, Texas. Aaron, what, what Ken, what was it like? I Like I said, it was surreal. I mean, there's half-naked women running around and talking very explicitly about, you know, everything that came up on the chats. Right. And, I mean, it was fine, but it was it was weird. It's, it's very tame. Yeah. I mean, it's it, not as that bad, but it's definitely adult only. And yeah, it's not X-rated. I mean, no, yeah, one, no, no, no. there's it's no if graphic you guys are sex interested or anything in going on, watching that, That's on Thursday night. Yeah. But and it was different. Enough <laughs> about that. Yeah, that was the that was morning fun, show. Yeah, I know. <laughs> So um, so we always do wacky news for about maybe uh, 20 to 30 minutes, depending on how we feel or how much you guys are laughing. Um, and Ken, you're talk you have another tech segment. What are you doing? Well, <clears throat> I don't know if this is an age-old question, but it's an interesting question. Can you hack an airplane with your smartphone? And the answer to that is yes, and I'll tell you how they did it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm it'll just, freak you out and you'll never want to fly again. I'm just confused about the whole <laughs> hacking thing. Like, what? Like, they, do they make the plane do something? Do you, you will learn oh all boy. about it. How does your, oh, real quick, sweet honey, how does your wife feel about it, Ken? She's fine with it. She doesn't care that I went to the ranch. I mean, it's she like, she knows me. I'm not going to do anything. Yeah. You know, when Stuart <laughs> goes, I'm like, I have fun. You know, it's just filming and it's just work and... It's not that bad. No, no, as, as, as jobs go, it's it's hardly a bad one, but yeah, it's just work. <laughs> so, and then Oscar's going to be here talking about movies, as he does every Friday. Yep, that's going to be fun. So that'll be fun. And then events. So if you guys, um, towards the end of the show, have any events that you would like to share, and we'll talk about, um, mm -hmm. throw it out there at like yeah. uh, 945, just start chatting in and telling us. All your events. What's going on? That's right. We're here to help, you know, promote events. I mean, that's part of the interaction that we that we like so much on here. Oh, yeah. So, Wacky News. Brandy, what do oh, you got? Oh, should I start? Oh, boy. All right. Where do I start? I'm going to start with zombies. You see, all my stuff has been about sex, and a lot of her stuff has been about zombies. I'm sensing a pattern from I both of us I actually have here. a sex one t this morning if we Is have time sex to get zombies? to it. Because that um, would be weird. <laughs> I might have already done a story like that. <laughs> All right, so this one is a new zombie fragrance. Zombie yeah. fragrance. So okay. So you've seen Walking Dead, and um, what they say, what they do on Walking Dead is they rub the dead zombie um, stuff all over your body, and you smell like a dead zombie. So. Um, so they won't attack you. So they won't attack you because they you they think that you're a zombie. So okay. there's a picture of this. Um, they have a men's and women's zombie fragrance. Okay. So, um, I don't know. Apparently it doesn't smell very good. TiVo says, ode to blood. <laughs> so, let's see. Um, 
the zombie for her <laughs> smells like grass, but not fresh smelling grass. It's more like long clippings that have been sitting in trash bags for weeks because nobody wants to lug um, the, them out to the curb to be picked up. Um, the men's, zombie for men's, smells like the forest floor. It's a combination of dried leaves, mushrooms, mildew, moss, and earth. Hmm. So pretty much they say it kind of stinks. But, um, <laughs> and um, they're not sure if like, like a real apocalypse happens that it's really going to keep the zombies away. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Um, Johnson says, is Natalie on today? Natalie is not because her band's playing. Yep, her band is playing tonight, so she's just resting up. You know, needs all her energy for the the show tonight and tomorrow night. So, but if you're in Reno and you're going to be around the Pepper Mill, what about seven o'clock, eight o'clock is when it yeah. starts? Come on by and, and watch her band. You will not be disappointed. Decoy is awesome, and you know she has great lungs, as we all know. So, would you guys um, uh, buy the zombie fragrance? I want to know. So, the women's. I mean, it also smells like stuff from the bottom of a wine barrel for a feminine <laughs> touch. It says. Nice. So. uh... You know, some people are into some things. So. Randy says no. I mean, he's not He's not up for that. Nikki's no way. Sweet honey, heck no. <laughs> but so. maybe, I mean, if, the, if there, an apocalypse is coming, you know, you just might want to stock up just in just case. Just in case. But how in the world do they know what a zombie smells like? Jane says it's stupid. and. <laughs> I think it's more of a novelty item, yeah, I would say, for I Walking would, Dead fans. Just I'm like sure. Just like I would think the Bacon Scope mouthwash yes, is bacon probably scope more mouthwash of a novelty as well. I'd probably use that before for the zombie stuff, honestly, but uh, Sal 99 is no way. Tito says, a boy just wanted to smell like death, uh, oh boy. <laughs> oh, just that death smell just creeps me out, makes me want to vomit. Yuck, 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 yuck. <laughs> yuck, 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 Fantastic. What kind of weird thing do you have for us this morning? Well, <laughs> if, you're, if you like books, you like reading, and you like being topless while you're reading your book, then you should go to New York City, because New what? York City is the home of the outdoor, this is a long title, so forgive me, the Outdoor Co-Ed Topless Pulp Fiction Appreciation Society. And it's co-ed, but really it's mainly a lot of women that go to the park in New York and uh, read topless. That's awesome. Because you can do that, because toplessness is legal in all five boroughs of New York City. So Who would have known? They form this group. To, to spread awareness and to kind of remind people that, yes, this is legal, this is okay. And, and they just like being in the sun. Um, one of them, they said, okay, here's what they define their group mission statement as. It says, we are a group of friends and friends of friends and friends of friends of friends and complete strangers who love good books and sunny days and enjoying both as nearly in the all together as possible. And tanning the boobies. <laughs> and tanning the boobies. Happily, in New York City, the law allows toplessness by both men and women, so that's the way we do our alfresco reading. If you're in New York and the weather's good, why don't you join us sometime? And for those I of you to. interested, I will post the link to their website on my Facebook and my G Plus account after the show. So, but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's... Okay, why not? I mean, you would do that. Would you do I, that? Well, CVH says I would. I mean, I don't know if he's been to Burning Man with me or her, <laughs> he or she, but... Uh all of all, really back. can? No, I'm, I'm not making this up. This is a real group. But um, that's pretty cool because North Carolina had the boob, the boob ban. Yes, you know, the they boob didn't ban. want to yep. show the areola or anything, and yep. it actually um, put you in jail for it. Mm -hmm. And New York is like completely opposite. And New York's like, Psh, viva the boobs. I would just think um, <laughs> it would be a bucket list thing just to be like, hey, I'm just like in Central Park and riding my bike topless or something. Like maybe a bucket list. Thing. Riding the bike topless wouldn't be a good idea because if you would no. uh, jogging would be <laughs> worse, book. depending on you and how you're built. Uh, uh, yeah, Paul is from New York and he said he never knew it was legal there. I've been there at least what six times or something, and I've never seen a topless lady. A lot of around. people don't realize it. It's one of those laws that people just aren't as aware. So this is kind of raising the public consciousness as well as being, you know, fun. <laughs> so Paul, since you're there and you live in New York, uh, maybe put something up on Facebook and talk to your buddies and be like. Hey, girls, and just see, like, if they do it and see what happens. <laughs> Suddenly moving to New York, Tiva. Okay. Tiva wants to, I, I mean, I wouldn't want to live in New York, but I wouldn't mind visiting. <laughs> and, now, and now you have something to do while you're there. Oh, <laughs> fun. So if you were a female, would you do that? If I was a female, yeah. I mean, depending on how comfortable I was with my, you know, my body and everything, then, yeah, I guess. Why not? I mean, I'm sorry, women are much more 
pretty to look at you than know, guys. I don't think I feel all the way <laughs> all the like that. Mm-hmm. I couldn't. Even at well, Burning Man, I am way. like, like um, Stevie says, I am a little hippie. In a way, yes, but I would still wear pasties. I wouldn't completely expose okay. myself. I don't want to scar little children, you know. I'm yeah. not a pedophile. So Stella's all I no. I wouldn't go the whole way. I know there's children out there, and I want to, you know, be a little respectful. So. Amy's all, it's not my thing. All of it would be fun. So, yeah, I mean, if it's your thing, there you go. Go to New York. You can do that. So. People wear pasties. How about the pasties that have, like, books on them since they're a book club? That would be perfect. Book yeah, get pasties. yourself some little book and pasties. Have, like, and the pages, like, flap in the wind. See, I mean, this is making reading sexy and fun for, for everybody. <laughs> Aaron, I just think you need to be respectful. Yeah, I, I agree. Know. It is, I, yeah. You shouldn't stare at them the and children. make, yeah, and don't make crude comments and stuff. I mean, there's an etiquette that yeah, goes with I being mean, at a nude beach or something You know, if I had a kid, like I, you know, one day when I'm kids, I'm, I don't want to be walking around New York and seeing, you know, having my little boy saying, Mommy, what's going on or something, you know. I want to introduce them to boobs when It's a teachable <laughs> moment, I guess, at that point. You're like, you know, women have those and... So there they are. But <laughs> in case know. you didn't know, you guys, um, we're not saying go to New York and do this. We're just saying it's legal there. Yeah, Who would have known that they have to. naked, topless book groups there? Helen so. says just go to a strip club if you want to see naked ladies. That's always an option, too. True, but this is free. Yeah, there's no two-drink two minimum <laughs> with, the, with the park. So. All right, let's see. I'll talk about a dog. Sure, why not? Okay, okay. so this guy Wayne, he learned his lesson after his dog named Sundance um, who's a golden retriever, ate his $500. So I have a picture of, this was in Montana. $500, huh? So, um, wow. he said he needs to find a better place to stash his cash when he travels. Okay. Um, his chiropractor's advice says, um, don't carry a wallet with you. So, um, he didn't. So his 12-year-old golden retriever ate the bills during a visit with his daughter to, um, in Denver last Christmas. Sundance was left alone in the car with five $100 bills and a $1 bill when they stopped for dinner. The dog dined on all of the $100 bills but left the dollar bill. Odd. <laughs> um, so what the owner did was collected the fragments from the dog's droppings, um, and his daughter kept finding more of the fragments in the snow once it melted. He said he washed away um, the bills. Um, taped them together and sent them to the Treasury Department hoping um, he can have them replaced. Yeah, good luck. So they're um, like digging through the dog droppings, taping them together. He mailed them to the Treasury. I mean, that's good effort on his part. It really is. Well, it's $500. I mean, that's, that's worth the effort. If it was a $5 bill, then, you know, of course not. But 500 bucks. It's hilarious that the dog ate every single $100 bill and just left the $1 bill. <laughs> it's like he knew... He knew what was most valuable. Because the mean, $1 bills are probably, what, the most dirty because they're handled the most? Probably, yeah. They're, they're, there's more of them in circulation. so. Yeah, I don't know. So don't leave your money hanging around just in case your dog eats it. Hugh says, great effort, and it is still legal currency. Okay, well, I don't know. Even if mean, it came out of your dog's bottom. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> so it's a bottom, bottom money. I don't know. Oh, goodness. But we'll see. I mean, hopefully there's a follow up on this and, and we hear good news. Cause, yeah, yeah, back from the Treasury, huh? That's a lot of money. The Treasury should put them back together. <laughs> Just for the effort that the guy put in collecting it all and. I don't know that I'd want the original back. Let's just give me a new five hundred dollar bill. Tiba goes seriously. Sounds like dirty money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> seriously. This money is in need of laundering for sure. Yes. Oh my. So, uh, let's see. The next uh, little story I have here. Do 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 do. It's not really wacky, but for those of you who love your coffee the way I love my coffee, and which I think is how? I, uh, intensely, <laughs> an intense love for coffee. <laughs> okay. uh, Starbucks has announced that their bagged coffee prices are going to go down by one dollar because they're getting killed in the competitive free market by other roasters who have, you know, lowered their prices. So in order to keep up. Um, it's going down to 8.99 from 9.99 for the pound of, of beans, but you might not see that at the store because this is a suggested price cut to their retailers. Retailers might still charge more for Starbucks than for other brands. Really, this is probably going to affect the wholesalers more than anything. But 
I'm excited. I'm definitely going to be looking for the price drop because I can't get enough of this ever. Colin so. says, I bet Brandy likes um, her coffee like she likes her men. Yes, I do like very sweet men, just like my boyfriend. Thank you, Colin. <laughs> Helen, Starbucks is a ripoff. Ah, yeah, probably. I don't care. I like caffeine. I think it's and very I, fattening. I, Coffee? Starbucks. Oh, Starbucks. All the cream <laughs> in there and all the sugar. And well, the yeah, you can eat one, you know, drink one of their, you know, venti double frappuccino whatever things and, and have all your calories for a day in one freaking drink. But I I like just the coffee stuff. That's fine with me, yeah. I don't know. I like Star. People rag on Starbucks coffee a lot, and I do really like some of their you know, I think they started others. as an independent. They're like a little independent. They're a little family owned. Yeah, they weren't like always a mega. Out. Yeah, they, they weren't always a big corporation. And that's a big misconception that a lot of people have about um, Starbucks being the chain. But it started off. Just At the like same time, there were some of the more generic, you know, labels out there. Like uh, I guess it's uh, Walmart has their own little version of the Starbucks type of roasts, and and some of those are really good too. So I don't know. I'll drink whatever tastes good to me. I don't care what it is. <laughs> I like my K Cup Brewer thing. Thanks. You know, what is that? Oh, when I'm at the next Starbucks, ask for the micro mini shot. Okay, I'll give that. A, Ooh, I'll yeah. give that a shot. Um, Tebow says I like my K cup brewer. K cup, it's never strong enough. I like my coffee to be strong, and even the darkest roast that they have available for those little single serving cup brewing machines doesn't get there for me, so I prefer to just, you know, mix my own, <laughs> so to speak. Yeah, um, Stuart likes his coffee so sweet, um, he can actually chew on it, probably, because of all the sugar in there, mm -hmm. so he's nor it's like um, he's chewing on it. Okay. How sweet. <laughs> Jane says, I like the Seattle coffee blends. Ooh, Producer Mountain Stewart Dew. Is tea. <clears throat> Mountain Dew. I can't stand mm. Mountain Dew. I just can't. I like, can't do that flavor. That was my addiction in um, Sorry, high school. Yeah. Mountain Dew and Baby Ruth. I'd probably have a six-pack Mountain Dew a day, which was insane in high school. As, I would never do that again. Yeah, yeah. But I don't. It was just really good. As far as tea goes, Earl Grey is my favorite tea. That's awesome. I'm having some green tea at the moment. Green tea. <laughs> green tea's good. Is there any kind of coffee from Texas? I don't know, not that I've heard of. I don't know of a dedicated coffee roasting label from Texas, but. So, okay, you guys know about Google Street View? You know about that, right? Okay. Yeah, the so cameras everywhere invading all of our privacy. They do. So guess what? There's a couple <laughs> that got caught having sex on Google Street View in Australia. Those Australians, <laughs> gotta love them. <laughs> so I have some pictures of this. It's not that bad. Uh, so there are probably people out there who don't want to be caught having sex for all the internet to see. But then there are <laughs> <No>. these two. <laughs> and uh, they, they did it intentionally, is what yeah, you Yeah, like they weren't really, okay. they weren't really like doing it. Okay. Um, it was fake. It was just a setup. You know, it was just <laughs> to be funny. Okay. So I mean, the guy is just is drinking a beer and the girl's waving. It's just funny. I don't know. It's like. Like, kind of like, you know, they're joking, you know? Like, it's not real, you guys. Okay. But tell me that's not a funny story. And then now, all of a sudden, because they did that, they're, like, infamous. That's awesome. That's fantastic. Oh, my goodness. Um, but, yeah, yeah the, guys, the guys, they're not really doing it, the girl, you know. <clears throat> it's comical. <laughs> the guy's drinking a beer, so hopefully he's not driving. <laughs> but, um... I think that's great. I mean, what other things can you think of <coughs> to do for Google Street View? <laughs> Apparently, they saw, like, the car or whatever it is coming along. Oh, and the, the van. The van. The, the and they're like, yes, let's do something really quick. And then they did it. I would totally do something weird like that just because. So what other weird things could you do for Google Street View if you happen to see them? That's so cool. I mean, kudos to them for thinking fast. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty Keep awesome. Keep dreaming, so. <laughs> What other things could you do? What other things could you do for Google yeah. Street View if you just saw them? I would pick up, like, all my cats and hold them. <laughs> like a crazy cat lady thing or something. I don't know. <laughs> well, that's only if all your cats are outside with you. I hope Google Street View oh isn't peering into your window. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of something weird we could do. Um... It's no longer Street View. <laughs> rain, uh, that rain is the best is story, the best story ever. ever. It's hilarious. I love a great sense of humor, and they definitely have it. They do, and, and, and really quick thinking. Definitely. And he just happened to have some beer in his car. <laughs> uh, 
that's awesome. Well, to continue the Australian theme, Ellen DeGeneres is talking again about how she wants to move to Australia because I guess that's where her wife, Portia de Rossi, uh, was originally born in Melbourne, so they went and visited there. So she's hinting that when she retires from TV and she's still being coy about when that might be, that they might actually pack up and take everyone to Australia. So. You know, they just recently went to Australia. Mm -hmm. um, they went down under. Mm -hmm. but, um, she, I love watching her show. She's hilarious. And it's funny, I just had a dream about Australia, and then you're telling me this, and I'm doing this Australian story. Mm -hmm. It's just, I'm psychic. You see, Brandy doesn't believe in coincidence, so maybe there's something to this. Huh? Oh! I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> well, that's pretty cool. Have you, would you ever go to Australia? I would love to go to. I, there are so many places that I want to travel. Uh, Karina's not as much into uh, overseas travel as I am. I went all through. I slept on trains all through Europe back in the 90s, and that was fun. But I didn't get to England, so I want to go to England. I didn't get Me to too. Ireland. I want to go to Ireland. I want to go everywhere. Uh, I would love to go to Australia. I mean, there's a bunch of places I would like to go. So. Molly says Brandy could fill in for Ellen's show. A time yeah. spot. Oh my Don't gosh, that would be amazing. I don't know if I can ever fill her shoes, though. She's great. She's, she's, <laughs> she's hilarious. Like, her her books are awesome. Her if you've read any of her and, novels, um, books are And great. Chelsea Handler. I don't like Chelsea Handler. And she writes I know I'm in the minority. Well. I don't like you Chelsea don't like Handler. Her? She annoys me. She annoys the piss out of me. I think she's <laughs> hilarious, but I really think that she... You know when you look at somebody, you can just tell if they smell funny? Maybe it's just me. But I think Chelsea <laughs> Handler has, like, a weird smell to her. Like, she doesn't shower as often as she should. I, I don't think about her enough to wonder about that. I just don't like But I really like, like her, Handler. and I think she's hilarious. But <laughs> for some reason, I just think she might smell weird. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's fine with me. Um, <laughs> I had to Adrian. share. <coughs> <laughs> Agent says, how are you both this morning? We're good. Uh, Natalie and Dave are off. Dave is on vacation, and Natalie is resting up for her band's performance tonight and tomorrow. Which so. we have to go see. We don't. We need to figure out what day we're going, because mm -hmm. we need to all go together. That would be fun. I smell, like, amazing. Thank you. I, she, I'm, I'm, no, she, she wore deodorant and everything. It's nice. Uh, okay, so have you guys ever lost your wallet or lost anything really special? That you yes. Have? Yeah, I hate that. I hate that when that happens. But uh, we're so, gonna we're gonna need to. Uh, so that's a teaser for next week. Yeah, yeah, we'll <laughs> have to we'll have to come back to that one. But, but Oscar's here now. That's right. We need to take a quick break. Next. Tech is coming up next. We'll have tech bites update. So lots to get to. Don't go anywhere. You're watching LoadedTV.com. The wake up call. We'll be right back. So stay tuned. Welcome back. Hello. Hey. Oscar's here. <laughs> Oscar's here. She decided to join in. That's right. He's in fashionably late. <laughs> fashionably late. Uh, he is right on time. Yeah, Thank he you is. Very I was much. just kidding. Thank you very much. It's just kidding. I don't, I'm, I'm never late. That's right. Always <laughs> early. Always early. All right, Ken, what you got for us? Okay, for your tech bites today. All right, this is kind of cool. There's a security summit in Amsterdam, and it's called Hack in the Box. <laughs> and there was one presentation that just blew everybody away and scared a bunch of people, and rightfully so. There's a guy named Hugo Tesso. And right off the bat sounds a little bit. Which sounds yeah, like a sinister uh, bone villain to me. Um, he, okay, to put this in perspective, he has 12 years of experience as a commercial airline pilot and 11 years experience in the IT world. So he knows what he's doing in yeah. both fields. Uh -huh. He created this attack code that in conjunction with a special Android app that he created, he was able to hack in to systems on a plane and do all sorts of fun things. Now, he bought he bought the equipment. He, what he did is he set up this virtual environment. He bought all the airplane equipment over a period of years so that he could run all these tests himself. So, <clears throat> so we didn't do it on a live plane. It wasn't on an actual flight or anything. But he spent three years putting the system together. And basically, this code called Simon, along with uh, the Android app called Planesploit, like exploit, yeah, uh, Planesploit, sure. uh, can take full control of the flight aircraft and all of its systems and the pilot's displays. Wow. Oh, my goodness. He could even virtually control the airplane using the accelerometer on his Android phone. Wow. Quote, you can use this system to modify approximately everything related to the navigation of the plane, he said. Wow. <laughs> so first, there's two key systems that he that he took over. 
The first is called the Automatic Dependent Surveillance Broadcast, or ADSB. Basically, this is the system that allows ground controllers to know what the aircraft's position is in flight. It's a constant data update back and forth. He found that this system, as implemented, and he put it together the same way that it's actually assembled at, at aircraft towers, has no security. They have nothing in place to, wow. to, to safeguard this system. Oh, that's good. <laughs> and you can use the system to eavesdrop on their conversations between the tower and the airplane and to actively interrupt the broadcasts or feed, you know, phony broadcasts to them. So that's the first system that he completely blew up. Oh, my. The second system well, that's horrific. is wow. called... <laughs> the Aircraft Communications Addressing and Reporting System, or ACARS. And this is the communication relay used between pilots and ground controllers. Now, using his Samsung Galaxy handset, and he doesn't say which model, yeah. uh, he demonstrated how he can redirect an aircraft's navigation systems to different map coordinates. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> he, wow. just, he plugged in whatever map coordinates he wanted, and that's what the computer followed, not what the, the pilots had, had programmed scary. in, right? He's all, quote, <coughs> excuse me, quote, ACARS has no security at all. The airplane has no means to know if the messages it receives are valid or not. So if they accept them, you can use them to upload data to the airplane that triggers these vulnerabilities, and then it's game over. <laughs> now, I imagine, I imagine the whole reason that he did this was to show to how much vulnerability there is. Exactly, right. right. He have, of course, he has not released how sure. he did this. He has not released how to make the app or any of the well, code the to do it. But it's, it's, it's by running the code between the aircraft's computer unit and the pilot's display, he was able to take control of what the air crew could see wow. on their displays and change the direction, the altitude, and the speed of the aircraft that is in this virtual environment. People are saying they're afraid. Um, they say that the government needs to lock them up in an underground bunker because Holly says now the terrorists are going to kidnap him and make him like okay, before do every, these crazy before things. Before everybody freaks out, there's two things that you have to remember about this. Now, it's a scary experiment, sure. but it was a, a controlled experiment, experiment yeah, exactly in a that. virtual right. airplane scenario sure. with equipment that he was running that he had complete access to. In okay. order to do this in real life, you would have to either, one, co-opt the antennas at the ground control right. flight center, sure. or two, have your own antennas that were powerful enough to somehow reach the airplane yeah, yeah, yeah. as it was flying over where your location was. So right. it is it's okay. very hard to actually do this in practical application, but the exploits are there. That's sure. what he was trying to point out to, uh, to people. The, has the FAA or has the have they responded anyway? Oh, or have or? they? Yeah. <laughs> they I are imagine, so freaked out. I imagine they're so terrified. It says uh, the precise nature of the code flaws wasn't released, but Tesso says the Federal Aviation Administration and the European Aviation Safety Administration have wow. both been informed and are, quote, working on fixing <laughs> the issues. So it's like, it reminds me of, a, of <laughs> Die Hard 4, which is the uh, Live Free or Die Hard, where uh, 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 Timothy Oliphant's character hacks into the American, goes into the Joint Chiefs of Staff with a laptop and hacks into our security systems just to show them how vulnerable we are. And it, then, you know, that's crazy. I mean, that really is like a movie about. About cyber terrorism thing. It's you really, know, and it's mess. scary, but I, you know, at the same time, I'm thankful that it was him that oh, did yeah, this, absolutely. that and figured it out, <laughs> and, and, and let people know. Yeah. It, so we can fix this now, <laughs> because no one obviously thought it was possible Johnson or a threat said, before. but still can, but the fact um, that he's done it proves that it can be done for real by That's maybe true. somebody else. That's true, but now they'll take steps to... Sure. And Helen says, Brandy, are you scared to fly now? No, because it's so much faster than driving, and <laughs> I'd rather fly because I don't want to be stuck in a car for a million hours. I'm not scared of flying, no. but I hate the experience of flying, and so I drive whenever possible because... That's crazy. To heck with airplanes. Triple X wants to know, Ken, is this a friend of yours? No, not a friend of mine. Never met the guy, but he's <laughs> clearly a genius and, and way above my skills. But uh, no, is that? I'm, I'm curious. You said it was called. The, it's a con, like a convention called. It's Hack a security, the Box, a right? security convention in Amsterdam called Hack in the Box. All, the whole point of the convention is probably just it's that. to do just this right. It's for people to come together yeah. and and bring sure. to light issues that need to be That's addressed. Good, so. It's good because it's better. It's <clears> better to show 
the flaws in your security systems that way than, like you said, than have. And clearly, they had no idea they weren't sure. looking for this. They had so right. better That's that crazy. it was brought to their attention, and so now we can block those, wow. plug those holes. <laughs> Stan says this is far too scary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Mike says, "How are you, sweet honey?" I wonder how much the app is going to be. <laughs> how much you, the app I, is? No, no, 99 I, cents control the airplane app. I'm like, thinking this isn't on Google Play. I'm yeah, just going to wow. go out on a limb here and say it's you like, can't get this on Google Lord. Play. But, uh, so, Browsers. yeah. I thought that was uh, I thought that was really fun. So well, theoretically, wouldn't that also mean so like if you could do something, <coughs> if he set up the experiment to do something to control to take over like the controls through you know the radio waves or however he did it of an airplane, wouldn't that mean you could also you could probably do it with like smaller things? Like I wonder if you could do it to where I could control that radio over there and like tune you know or something. I wonder if like he uh, has I, the expertise. That just yeah. goes to prove. Okay, he That's was a, a professional step, pilot. Sir. For 12 years, he was a professional IT guy for 11 years, and so he knew what he was doing. So, technically, yeah, if you have the knowledge of yeah. radio and transmission sure. things like that, yeah, why why couldn't you build your own app to hack in? Why not? I'm going to. Wow, That's would you ever go to that convention? You know how they have the would I go to, like I would that? love to go to some of these that conventions. That would be fantastic to get in there, but a lot of them are invitation only. So yeah, because they're probably a bunch of dudes who. Or like the cyber embezzlers and like yeah, Denny's afraid that every terrorist in the world is wanting to get their hands on this guy to learn from him. Well, again, this is guy. This is not probably just one guy. This is the, happens to be the one guy who is like, I'm going to test this. And it would be worthless yeah. for them to get a hold of him now because they're going to fix, the problem. Yeah, they're gonna fix so, the problem. Yeah. So if oh, anything, if is. anything, like if there are like cyber terrorists out there, they're going, who this guy did something. I wonder if I could say, you know what I mean? But again, he did it in like a control. It took thing. him years. Yeah, it was it like took a three him years, year three years. It's yeah. so like he just sat down and was like, or like went and parked outside the airport, whipped out his galaxy, was like, nah. yeah, you know, like a, he's having a McMuffin in the lounge. Yeah, yeah, like, like, you know, yeah. I hate Southwest. <laughs> yeah. He's like wow. flying in like remote control airplanes with his iPhone or whatever, like his galaxy. Holly, they are going to want Ken next then. No, no. Let's hope not. I don't have those kind of mad skills. No. If anything, they're, if anything, they're going to come after me because I have the antidote. <laughs> you have the antidote. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, that's right. You, he won't tell us what he poisoned, though. Uh, that's so. true. That's how he's going to make his Enjoy money, Enjoy right? your coffee. Enjoy your coffee. <laughs> Damn you, Oscar. Oh, my goodness. We that's all need a drink for that. That's pretty crazy. That is just the fact that that, that even exists. Like, that's even a, a rem, even a remote possibility. That's crazy. That's it's the 21st century, and yeah. it's a wonderful time to be alive with all of the things that go with yeah. it. Yeah. And let me ask this while we're on the subject real sure. quick, Ken, because uh, a buddy of mine, uh, my, my good friend and, and, uh, and movie uh, partner in crime, uh, Mike Fleming, we were talking about this the other night. Uh, he's a big uh, Star Wars uh, nerd. Huge okay. Star Wars nerd he is. And we were discussing about how a lot of the technology that you're seeing nowadays in like social stuff like pa uh, I, you know, tablets or uh, cell phones and stuff like that, mm -hmm. a lot of the designs come from the people who were gr who grew up on Star Trek and saw the touch screen and the flip tricorders and all right. that stuff. Yeah. And that's kind of where the designs are coming from as far as just like from a visual standpoint. And he talked about how uh, uh, you know, that was a big influence because a lot of the kids that watched the original series back then are next generation. I mean, they're you know they're young or now they're in charge of their scientific mm -hmm. fields and in charge of coming up with looks and and things like that. Like, do you think that's true? Like, do you think that's a major like uh, like as far as just like coming up like guys who are sitting around, not just coming up with the technology, but coming up with, like the design and like the you know the everything touch screen and everything this and that. Absolutely. Like, Absolutely, right. because we now have the communicator, yeah. Captain Kirk's communicator with sure. the flip phones. We have a tricorder. There yeah. is an actual working medical tricorder Craziness. out there in use. We have the hypo spray that Dr. McCoy used to you know, shoot into the arm without a needle. Exactly. Right. We have that. So, yes, it definitely has an effect on technology sure. and driving that to, to achieve that. You see something on a, on a futuristic show and you go, I want to make that happen. And right. it inspires kids to exactly. do it, to, to learn the skills. And it's fantastic. Now, the response I had, the question I had was, since Star Trek, even though, like, hasn't been until the, the 
the most recent movies, and aside from a, a couple movies here and there, hasn't quite been the cultural, uh, as culturally relevant, I guess I should say, the last couple of decades mm -hmm. as, let's say, Star Wars, which right, is another right. science uh, fiction thing, uh, even though it doesn't take place in the technically like the same galaxy or something. So my question was, I wonder if in another 20 years or another 25 or 30 years, if we'll see the kids who grew up on Star Wars start coming up with, like, light swords and, like, you know, and then I was like, that would be the interesting, like, that's how you get rid of all this gun control debate. You invent a lightsaber because well, that's a more elegant weapon. We I'm will saying. have to continue this because oh we need to take a break real we quick. Yeah, hey, no, I'm just curious. But the bill. <laughs> Coming back up is movies. Um, Johnson had a question. Hey, Brandy, how do I contact Natalie to ask on a date? She's very happily married, Johnson. Maybe in another life. She's married, but thank Johnson. You. Thank you. But we, we have to go. We'll be right back. You're watching Lotus TV. Don't Johnson. go anywhere. Stay tuned. Movies are up next. Movies She's got a next. Johnson already, Johnson. She's already married to a Johnson. <laughs> oh, MG. <laughs> Welcome back. You're watching LodaTV.com live from the That's Bonanza right. Casino in Reno, Nevada. The wake-up call. I'm Ken McKim. I am uh, I am Harrison Ford. That's no. Well, well pleasure not. to have you here, Harrison. Yes. Uh, no. So, are you looking forward to the new Star Wars films, Harrison? I'm very. You know what's funny? Uh, bro, we, I saw him. Uh, he was he was promoting uh, 42, which we'll talk about here in just a moment on uh, on David Letterman the other night. Mm. And I found this interesting. I don't know if it was just him playing coy. Or he was serious, but he's a very good. I, every time I think that Harrison Ford is one of these real, like, super serious actors who kind of takes himself too serious, mm -hmm. I'm completely wrong because he's it's all about making fun of himself, and he's one of the like the most genuine dudes I've ever met. Like, for as big of a superstar as he is, um, he's very un Hollywood. Very un Hollywood, very. which surprises the hell out of me because <laughs> the character he plays, you know, when he goes, because everybody. You know, everybody you see on TV when they go on to promote a movie or whatever, they're still playing a character. Uh, you know, yeah. the guy you see on David Letterman is not the guy behind closed doors. You know, sort right. Of thing. Yeah. So he has uh, his public persona. Exactly. Out there. And uh, and it's, uh, uh, Letterman asked him about the new Star Wars movies, and he said, uh, and he kind of joked about how, um, you know, I've only been in th I've only been in three of them. And they go, yeah, well, they made you know six, and they're going to make some new ones. Are you? And he goes, well, I was I wasn't asked back for the other ones. You know, and that was kind of as if he was very upset with the, you know, with the, with, the, with George Lucas and, and, you know, that he wasn't asked back for the other three. Of course, they were prequels, so that character wouldn't have been oh, in the okay. movies, but uh, it was just kind of funny, and he kind of, let's just leave it at that, as if he was very soured on the whole Star Wars experience. And nice. it was kind of funny, but I get it, to casual people, I might be like, ooh, Harrison Ford's really <laughs> mad at the Star Wars people, but, you know, I don't know. It, he has uh, a very dry sense of humor. It, he and, really does. Uh, he really does. And he pops up in the least places you'd least expect him, where he's making fun of himself and uh, the, he, uh, Jimmy Kimmel did a couple of music videos uh, some comedy videos a few years ago that he popped up in that, that spring to mind but anyway um, that's awesome uh, and then I saw him at Comic Con a couple of years ago he came out to promote uh, uh, Cowboys and Aliens it was his okay. first time uh, amazingly enough it was the first time he'd ever been to Comic Con those, yeah. and when he was introduced which was a surprise to the 10,000 people in the in the room waiting you know John Favreau was out talking about Cowboys and Aliens and when he brought him out by the way, in handcuffs, being drug out by security, which was hilarious. It was really one of the cooler moments I've ever experienced live. Like, people were chanting Indy and Han, and it was really cool. So, anyway, uh, we're talking about 42. 42 is the big uh, is the big uh, release this week. Yep. Uh, a movie that I've been really, really looking forward to um, uh, for, for about six or seven months now, or since I saw the first trailer uh, last uh, winter. Um, stars a uh, newcomer, uh, Chadwick Boseman plays. Of course, it's the story of uh, Jackie Robinson, who is right. um, one of the most, if not the most inspirational story in, in baseball history. Like, it's something that uh, really needs to be told. I'm glad. I was really excited they were putting out a new uh, version of the Jackie Robinson story for new, uh, you know, young people to go see. And it's just one of those stories that needs to be told every so, every number of years. Right. It's, it's a yeah. historical Absolutely. event like, in, and, in our uh, nation's and, history. So. And uh, it's something Absolutely. that has affected me, being a big baseball nerd that I am as well. Uh, you like baseball? Uh, yes, I know, right? I had I to, by I the way. I couldn't tell. He was subtle about By it. the way, uh, of course, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Jackie Robinson uh, it was 
the first uh, African American man to ever play in Major League Baseball. Mm -hmm. It was the first. It was 1948, uh, where he was brought in to uh, play for the Brooklyn Dodgers. Uh, uh, I had to go see, go and see the movie last night. I had to represent, so I rocked. I'm rocking a different set of Giants garb today than I was last night. But going to see a movie about the Dodgers, I had to rock some Giant stuff. So just that's all I'm saying. Just that's why I'm rocking this today. So <laughs> forever faithful. So I'm gonna put my hat down. But uh, anyway, so um, once again, uh, you know, I've been waiting for this movie for a while. I had a lot of high expectations from Harrison Ford uh, playing Branch Rickey, who was the owner of the Brooklyn Dodgers at the time, okay. one of the more historical figures also in Major League Baseball history. Um, the results, I was uh, I was let down, um, you know, in, a, in kind of a big big way. Uh, hmm. I, my initial response after the film ended was, well, that was fine. Like it was, you know, <laughs> that was like, fine. like it was it was entertaining enough. It was entertaining, and that was fine. The the problem is is. It's really, really, it's hard to do nowadays a, a biopic about anybody. Most of the time it's people with music, sometimes politicians, sometimes sports stars. In okay. Hollywood today, where it doesn't feel uh, formulaic. And uh, 42, for everything that it gets right, some of the baseball dialogue, some of the baseball sequences are, are, are legit and they look good. Um, okay. The style of the uniforms, the way they make the, the, uh, the fields look and the way, you know, like the production value of it all is spot on, really, really impressive. For everything they get right, it's just everything else is so paint by the numbers. It's everything that you've seen before. It's just a giant checklist of biopic cliches. And here's the scene where this happens. And here's the scene where this happens. So it starts out from nothing, rises to great heights, has a fall, bit, and, and then just, comes back yeah, up. And and it, and, yeah, you know, basically. Yeah. And it's just a lot about... And I thought they were going to... You know, they, they keep hyping the movie, and the advertisements of the movie are the true story of an American legend. And so I was hoping that they were going to get a little bit more into who the man was and, why, and how he... Um, handled all these like hor horrible things that he had to deal with and how he was really coming at it from all angles and while they they bear they dip their toe in if you will <laughs> okay. to the who the man is pool you know right, they're kind of right. ooh okay <laughs> they wade in that pool they sit on the edge and they let their cool their feet off but they never just jump in and let it you know encapsulate the movie because everything that you've seen in the movie and all the stuff they touch on mm -hmm. gets kind of repetitive before the end it's a lot of you know uh, and uh, and it's stuff you've seen before. There's another film that came out, it's coming up about 20 years ago. Now I was looking up, so I couldn't remember when it was released. I thought it was like 98, 99. Uh, turns out it was 96. So we're coming up on 20 years. It was an HBO TV movie called Soul of the Game. About tw 1996, I that. yeah, with Blair Underwood as as Jackie yep. Robinson, uh, Delroy Lindo, Satchel Paige, Josh, uh, 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 Michael T. Williamson as Josh Gibson. About not just Jackie Robinson, but about um, uh, you know the the group that was being selected from because not okay. only did Jackie Robinson get a lot of stuff from uh, Major League Baseball and from the white players already in Major League Baseball but from the Negro Leagues he caught a lot of a lot of uh, guff too because a lot of them felt like he, he was wasn't, out he wasn't the guy that should have been first like oh, okay. he was good but there were guys that were better at that point in time like you know Jackie Robinson's a Hall of Famer he was a tremendous baseball player right. but there's guys like Josh Gibson Satchel Paige uh, Larry Doby who ended up being the first American League uh, uh, African American player a lot of people thought he was better at Monty. There was a lot of players in the Negro Leagues that, you know, he was the, Jackie Robinson was very much the um, politically correct choice, which they uh. don't really go into in 42. Like, it's it's very much painting him as this heroic kind of mythic figure, which right. is fine for what it is, but it doesn't do anything to set itself apart from everything else. So I was just kind of uh, disappointed in that fact. Hollywood yeah. underestimates their audiences. Absolutely. All the time. Absolutely. All the time. They dumb everything down because they don't think people will get it. Sure. Uh, and I got, we got some questions here. What's the best baseball movie, in my opinion? That's a really tough one. I go through every every year before the baseball season starts, I kind of watch all of them. The first thing I would pop up would say is uh, Major League. That's kind of a cliched answer. Major <laughs> League, maybe both 
Durham. Um, the one that jumps up my list very quickly every time I watch it is a more recent one, which is Moneyball, which um, was a fantastic <laughs> baseball <laughs> movie. Yeah, absolutely fantastic baseball movie. Um, then somebody asked what I thought of Red Tails. Uh, Red Tails, uh, real quick, was uh, it was good, not great. Um, I was kind of disappointed in the, the aerial sequences. It seemed a lot like a. Uh, there was a rumor that George Lucas directed those sequences because it was made through Lucasfilm, mm -hmm. and I would believe. It because that's those sequences felt like <laughs> like, uh, like a Star Wars rehash, like a Star, yeah, like there was <laughs> Tie Fighters like right. fighting uh, X Wings. It was really kind of surreal watching that. Um, it was okay. Uh, no, the one with Justin Timberlake was Trouble with the Curve with Clint Eastwood. That was awful. Stay away from that. <laughs> that is a horrible baseball movie. Okay. It's an okay family drama, but it's a horrible baseball movie. Okay. Like the final sequence is the most unrealistic baseball stuff I've ever seen in my entire life. It's a horrible baseball movie. Okay, family drama, bad baseball movie. <laughs> So you don't like it, huh? No, no, I was really, yikes. <laughs> nice. Uh, but, uh, but anyway, so 42 <coughs> was okay. Uh, somebody, uh, you know, it was okay. It's not the worst thing I've ever seen, but it's so by the numbers. They do absolutely nothing to set themselves apart all the way down. I would say the only thing that's really bad about the movie uh, is the score, which is so manipulative and so, <laughs> like... Here's where you cry, and here's where you cheer, and here's where you're sad for him, and here's where he's angry, and it's just so manipulative. It's like Solieri says in Amadeus. Oh, how man. are they going to know when to clap unless you give them a big bang at the yes, end? Yes, exactly. <laughs> and and that's like, how Hollywood thinks of us. If you wanted to play the movie a goes if, if you wanted to play a drinking game with 42, it would be take a drink every time Jackie Robinson does anything in heroic music plays. Because it's like <laughs> it, the movie is this far from like Jackie Robinson getting up in the morning. And t brushing his teeth in it, -na -na -na. I guess he's brushed his teeth. So. Betty, the one with Tom Hanks was League of Their Own, League of Their Own one of my favorites. Which Love is that a, one. another wonderful, wonderful baseball yeah, movie. So. The Rookie with Dennis Quaid, I love yeah, that yeah, movie too. Yeah, Rookie was good. I know not in a sports movie. And, uh, but if you haven't seen Soul of the Game, and uh, one thing I wanted to say real quick, uh, 42 just reeked to me of a combination. There's two movies that it, that it reminded me of that, to, in my opinion, did what 42 was trying to do, but on a much better scale. Number one is Soul of the Game, so if you have a chance to see that, I don't know where you would even find it now. It's a 20-year-old movie that was a TV movie to begin right, with. Right, that would be hard uh, to That would be tough to find. Soul of the Game, uh, w which handles the, the, the Negro League and the integration of baseball a little bit better than, uh, than this one. Um, uh, and the other one, which is a really underrated one Wonderful, wonderful baseball movie. I'd have to put at the top of any baseball movie list. Also, it's called 61. It was also an HBO TV movie, but it was directed by Billy Crystal, and it was about the Mickey Mantle, Roger Maris home run chase of 1961 okay. and trying to break Babe Ruth's record. That handles a lot more about the the, one, the single guy with the whole world against him and being thrust into this world where he doesn't understand why he's so famous all of a sudden and, and having to deal with that pressure. That handles it much better. If, if it would have been a little bit more like that, it maybe would have worked out a little better. But, you know, 42 leans too much on the cliches to really resonate. There wasn't a, a dramatic moment in the movie that felt authentic to me, which was too bad. It wasn't okay. not a horrible movie. It just felt like a very manufactured uh, kind of generic movie. So I would... You know, if you're a baseball fan, check it out. If not, maybe you're interested in the story. I look up those other two movies, or just wait till it comes out. So, well, that's going to have to be it. We've got to take another break, but we've got a lot more to get to. So, don't go anywhere. You're watching LodoTV.com, The Wake Up Call, Life in the Bonanza and Reno. Stay tuned. Word. Word. <laughs> Just to answer a question somebody asked also what the what the baseball movie with Wesley Snipes is. Uh, he's in Major League, but I imagine you're referring to the one called The Fan. It's not really a baseball movie. It's more of just like a crazy, like, uh, serial killer. Stalker movie. Yeah, stalker movie, but it just set against... Uh, it's like the also the only baseball movie that features the Giants, which is kind of sad. But um, <laughs> it's like it's like the only baseball movie where I could look and watch the Giants in a movie, and it's about a crazy band. So it's just. But it also has De Niro in it. Not a very good movie. Although interestingly enough, about the fan. Before I forget, if you watch the fan, um, at the end of the movie, uh, one of the Colorado Rockies players is our own Rick D'Elia. 
Ooh, really? Very good friend of mine, Rick Delia. You've seen him on the show, comedian. He was an extra in that flick when he was just getting into Hollywood, uh, when he just moved there from Boston. He knew how to play baseball a little bit, so he went to an audition, and he plays. He actually gets it. There's a shot of you own the fan. If you're one of the five people on this planet that own the fan, <laughs> and you check it out, at the end there's a shot where the left fielder runs up and grabs the ball and throws it. He's like a running in, and he throws it back in the infield. That's Rick Delia. It's crazy. Left-hander. I want to do that. Yeah. So Rob says, please say hi to Stuart for me. Rob Nelson, AB. ABC News, New York. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and Vic is watching from Jazz. Hello, right. Vic. Hello, Vic. Um, Ball29 says, Oscar, you are so cute. I agree. <laughs> I completely uh, and totally love your energy. agree. I, that's, which is amazing because I feel like I'm moving at about six miles per hour right now. <laughs> so I'm glad it at least comes off as if it's very early at the morning for me. All right, so let's see what's going on this weekend. If you guys just want to do something cool, um, the Models and Bottles event. Um, it's a live Marcello Rostani's um, birthday, and he's doing a live photo shoot. That's in Tahoe, Saturday at 10 p.m. And this Saturday is also um, some MMA fights um, tonight, and an MMA fight as well. Uh, there's a lot of Reno little theater stuff going on. There's lingerie bowling, right? Lingerie bowling happens every weekend at, uh, at Harris every Friday and Saturday. But let's be honest, uh, the real reason to come to Harris every Friday and Saturday is because uh, because me uh, and uh, I, you know, I host the beer pond tournaments down there. I MC them. Uh, starts at 8:30. There's a little overlap from when we start the beer pond signups before lingerie bowling ends. So it's really, I'm a real distraction to them. They quite, they pretty, let's, let's, they can't keep their hands off me. Let's just put and it If you guys are into softball, um, UNR softball, 3 p.m. They're against Colorado State today. Nice. Aces play Sacramento tonight at 6.35. Sacramento River Cats. Which time. means fireworks. Ah. She's so excited about the fireworks. Well, today is, if, if I'm not mistaken, today is the home opener of the Aces, is it? Yeah, it might have to maybe, it, maybe it was yesterday, because minor league baseball does a weird thing where they start series on Thursdays. But For those of you who like polyester, there's a polyester party featuring DJ yes! Koss. At, uh, they, they recommend bell bottoms and butterfly collared shirts. It's uh, the, this Saturday, 9 o'clock at Studio on 4th. The tickets are $8. That seems so fun. I would love There to, you go. I would, I would ensconce myself in polyester if it were socially relevant, if it, were, if it was okay. Mary, I just have to say thank you. That's very sweet of you to say. I don't believe it for a second. But then Me neither, Mary. <laughs> and Mandy wants no, to know if there's a church you go to in town, Oscar, because she wants you to come to her church group. Uh, there at this, not really at this point. Not, not, not like anything regular. Not, not that I go to on a regular. I kind of like to, I kind of consider everybody who meets me goes to the church of Oscar. Oh, my no, God. No, I'm just kidding. Church kidding, of, of course I'm kidding. You better be kidding. I'm so hey, on Helen the Oscar. Or what? <laughs> or, oh, we'll get into it after the show. Oscar, <laughs> Heal your movie experience. <laughs> so, um, Reno Fur Party, if you guys like to wear fur instead of polyester or both, that's on April 20th at 9 p.m. It's like a Burning Man thing, you guys. No, oh, never mind. There's a Reno Hip Hop Award <laughs> Show on the 20th as well. The 21st at 10 a.m. is Reno Earth Day. Oh, wait, wait, a Hip Hop Award Show? Uh huh. Is that what you just said? Reno Hip Hop that? Award Show. I don't know. Ask me Reno later. Reno has a hip hop. Well, I don't know. Okay. Well, it's a good I'm glad you brought it up. Me too. <laughs> what else do you want to bring up? Uh, I don't know. All right, then. Shut your face. No. <laughs> oh, again, Natalie's band playing decoy at the Pepper Mill. Save your you want to come down? Tonight and tomorrow no, night no, starting, no, I think, at either 7 or 8. And, uh, uh, you want to come see Natalie? No, I have to work. Oh, beer pong, you guys. We just talked Watch about that. Watch my bowling. <laughs> Sweet. Do you not? Uh, she's not listening to you at yeah. all. Curly Oscar. She's just like, no, I tried I'm reading. We just went over this. this. It's really hard to read the chat and have a conversation. All right, let's say hi to our viewers because we have already gone over. Yes. Johnson, Sweet Honey, Janice. Mandy. Mandy. Mary. Thank you, Mary. That's sweet. Ball 29, Rob, um, Vic, VLD. The one thing I will say real quick is this. I, I lied earlier. 42 is not... The only movie that was released this weekend. You're the already other, making a retraction. I know, right? The only, the other movie, the other big release this weekend is a Scary Movie 5, which I will say this: if you plan on paying or if you pay to go see Scary Movie 5, Charlie, we can't be friends. That's the <laughs> end of this. Just if that's the case, and you know me, don't know me anymore. That's all I'm gonna say. Uh, oh, all you can do is sit, uh, just sit at home. 
watch like the airplane on DVD or like the Naked Gun movies on DVD and Google image pictures of Ashley Tisdale. It's the same thing. Because she's the only reason that yeah, anybody should ever go see well, that. Well, Charlie Sheen's an ad. No, who cares? So, <laughs> uh, Maddie says she goes to Grace and she wants you to join her. I heard that was a good church. All right, you guys. Charlie Sheen. So, 1993. Unfortunately, I like him. the hour has flown by <laughs> again. <laughs> It's crazy. It's I already know. over. It's Is that it? All right. Well, I'll see you guys later. All right. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So you're watching again. LoadedTV.com. We're called The Wake Up Call. Um, we come to you live from the Bonanza Casino in Reno, Nevada, Monday through Friday at 9 to 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. <laughs> and we don't get to see you guys for two days. I'm sad. I love doing this. I love getting up every morning and doing this. So I'm going to miss everybody for two days. Oh, well, we'll probably hang out. We'll go see Natalie's band play. We'll do some fun stuff. Yeah. Why? You, you forgot your keys now, Oscar? Oscar doesn't know what he's doing. He's clearly this, needs more coffee. That's not water in the water bottle. No, it's hey, vodka. We've got to we've got to take off. It's not my water. Uh, it's mine. Yeah. We'll uh, <laughs> we'll see you guys on Monday. Tell all your friends to watch us. We love it when you chat in, and the more people that watch, maybe we get to do this longer. Like us all on Facebook. Yes. Google Plus. Send your tech questions. Kenaloadedtv.com. Blah 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 blah. We gotta go. <laughs> see you guys. You guys rock. I forgot my microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Bye guys, thank Bye. you all so much. Oscar. <laughs> <laughs>